Today we're taking a look at a new upcoming feature on the Mirage 2000, the TAF, Teleaffiage, or Remote Target Designation. You can think of this as a simplistic data link, which allows ground stations like airbases, SAM sites or early warning radars to provide a single target which is displayed within our radar scope, along with interception instructions for us and rules of engagement. It requires exclusive use of our red radio, making it unusable for voice communication whilst in operation. Let's get into it. We'll start by opening our kneeboard with right shift and K, and using either the square brackets or the arrows at the bottom of our kneeboard, we'll cycle over to the TAF GCI channels page. This page is automatically generated by the mission, and it will list the 20 closest stations capable of providing TAF GCI guidance within the range of our start location. In this situation, we're going to go for number three. So now we need to tune our new radio panel, which is down to the right, just here. We'll rotate the knob to the right to select channel three. Lastly, we need to set up our red radio, found on the front left, by selecting the UHF mode switch to F1. And in a moment, we will hear a tone. That tone is the TAF link indicating we have received an update from the ground station. You'll hear this each time a significant change happens, like an update to your rules of engagement, or a new target is designated. To display the information on our display, we'll go down to our weapons panel, and we will pick a weapon, and we will pick TAF from the PCA. On our radar display, we now have in yellow information being transmitted by data link from the ground unit. Top left, we have our target's MAC number the real or true bearing, and the combined closure rate, the altitude in hundreds of feet, so 25,000 feet, and the number of aircraft in the group, in this case two. Along the bottom we have the commanded intercept airspeed, and the commanded altitude for our own aircraft. We also have the reset button, which if we press theta, will clear the target from our system. Inside our display we have a nice long yellow line which points directly towards the aircraft being linked. We also have a carrot indicating the bearing we should fly for our intercept, along with an arrow for the velocity, which will change in length based on how fast they want us to fly, so we simply match up our carrots to fly the intercept course. So we'll come left, and once we are now on the heading of the target, but you can see the carrot does not match, because it wants us to fly off to the left to perform the intercept. So we'll line up the two carrots, thereabouts, that's good enough. And you can see we're flying at Mach 1 as commanded, and they want 30,000 feet, which we're climbing up to. If we extend our radar display outwards so we can see the target, and we can see it on the radar, so let's just de declutter that by moving the radar out of view. So we can see a T for our target. We also see the velocity vector of the target, and we have here the aspect. If we were head on, this would show 0. If we were behind them, it would show 180. And if we were left or right, it would show 90. If we, for whatever reason, lose data link, the t and velocity will become dashed, and our computer will continue to compute a predicted course based on the last known velocity and heading until we press the erase button, or until data link is restored. On our HUD, we'll find the rules of engagement, just above our selected weapon. Lib means fire at will. This will display if no friendlies are within 20 nautical miles of the target. IFF, to interrogate our target with our IFF system before shooting, which will show if friendlies are within 5 to 20 nautical miles. Vis, perform a visual identification before shooting, if allies are within 2 to 5 nautical miles and int for hold fire, which will display if allies are closer than two nautical miles to our target. Just like before, you will hear a tone if the rules of engagement are changed. Your aircraft is exempt from the check for friendly aircraft, however your wingmen, for example, may cause the rules of engagement to change as you close in, so bear this in mind and exercise your own best judgement on how to engage. So with that, it's as simple as flying toward our target and arranging the radar to detect the contact when we fly within range. Now it's completely up to you if you want to actually follow or disregard the information provided by the data link for intercept, or follow it yourself, 
but that should be plenty enough to get you on target. And then of course we can lock it up and engage or intercept. Okay, so a couple last notes on how the system works and the editor. So in order for the mission to use the system, you don't need to do any changes or setups different to how you normally would for a mission, although I would recommend for SAM sites in particular that you give them a meaningful name, because this name here will appear on the kneeboard. This will help the pilot and player figure out what they are referencing. The kneeboard will also amend the grid coordinate to the end of your name. Any airbase or SAM site with an early warning radar or search radar can be used to donate to the system for pilots to use, and it will populate the list from the 20 closest from the spawn point of your aircraft. Next up, the system, so say we were using Kiryat here, the system will designate targets based on proximity predictively. That means that this aircraft here, being the closest aircraft, will be the designation first as it is the closest aircraft. However, as this aircraft gets closer and closer and closer, it will switch over to the new target. However, if we were to say have the aircraft here, and we put this one here, so now we're in a situation where this aircraft is in fact closer, but this aircraft is flying toward us. The system predicts five minutes into the future where it's going to be, so it's going to say this aircraft is going to be over here in five minutes. And instead of designating the actually closer aircraft at the moment, it's going to pick the second aircraft as its priority target. Lastly, this system was not actually fielded on any mirages in reality. It was created and tested, and RASBAM have great documentation on how to reproduce it, but should you choose, if you want to go for realism, you can take the system out of any aircraft that is a Mirage 2000 by selecting the additional properties, and we can tick or untick the enable TAF GCI link. This will remove that new panel from the cockpit, preventing the system from being used. So overall, TAF makes for a great, helpful tool, perfect for scramble interception missions and defensive combat air patrols. This feature and many more will be available in the next DCS Open Beta update. I hope you enjoyed, and take care.